I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. Welcome to our 11 o'clock service here at Trinity Baptist Church. We're located at 4020 Jefferson Boulevard. But during these covert times, you can catch us on the internet or on the radio broadcast. We welcome you. To be a closer part of our congregation, we ask you to give to Trinity Baptist Church so that you can show that you care about what we're doing here. We ask you to send your donations to Trinity Baptist Church or on the internet on our website. You can donate through that way. We thank you for visiting with us through our radio broadcast and our internet service. God bless you and thank you for your support. I'll be with you from scripture right after this song, amen. Savior. Thank you, choir. 
Our scripture will be taken from the book of Acts chapter 17, 1 through 16. I mean 10 through 16, I'm sorry. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Brea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans, Jews, were more noble in character than those of Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek men and women. But when the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Brea, some of them went there too, agitating the crowd and stirring up trouble. The believers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed in Brea. Those who escorted Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. God's word. Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you once more and again for all that you've done and all that you continue to do in our lives. We thank you that we can trust in you and never doubt, that we can stand upon your promise. Father, I pray that for the spiritual leaders in our community, our pastors, that you will continue to strengthen them in their lives to stand strong in the Lord. I pray that they will quickly hear and respond to the promptings to obey your voice. I ask you to strengthen them with might in their inner man, that they may remain unbending in their commitment to the unchanging truth of your word, even if it means they must take a stand that is different from the days of this immoral community. And I believe that by standing strong on your word every day and on every side, you will strengthen them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to lift them up and hold them in the hollow of your hand. We confess that those who are spiritual leaders over our church communities walk in divine wisdom and counsel and might that they are marked by integrity and free from compromise to stand with unwavering commitment of, to God's unchanging truth as revealed in his teaching of the Bible. Regardless of what society says and what the courts declare or what the spirit of the age dictates, may the leaders in our church community and the spirit of the living God declare that they are sensitive to God's word and voice. They are quick to be corrected when it is required, and they will stand the test of time. They will be committed to the word of God. They are anointed to minister in the last days that we're facing during this covert time. So we thank you. We ask, O oh Lord, that you touch our leaders in the city of Los Angeles, the state of California, and the United States of America. We lift up our politicians and our president, and we pray that you would open their eyes to see and their ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. We lift up those who are bereaved among us, that you would comfort them in their hour of need. Giving you all praise and honor, or that you'd lift, Lord, that you would lift up their bowed down head, and that you would strengthen their walk in Christ. And we pray you be with those who have lost their families, that you will continue to encourage their souls. We thank you for this choir, and we thank you for the music ministry here at Trinity Baptist Church. Through Christ our Lord and Savior, we ask it all for his sake. Oh! 
white as snow. Oh, only you can do it, it's my Lord. I know there's no one like you, nowhere. Hey, wash me, wash me, Lord. Praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Dear Lord, we just want to, we just want to say thank you for what you've done in the past, for what you're doing now, and for what you do in our future. We're going through a, a terrible phase in this, in this world, but through you and with you, all things are, are possible. We know that we'll come out on the other side as long as we stay fixed on you and do it the way you say to do it. We thank you for your perfect justice because you are the only person that, you're the only one that can have perfect justice. We thank you for the speaker of the hour who's full of the Holy Spirit. Allow us to listen to his words and digest them and understand them and, and go out and do the work of the Lord. We thank you for those who are assembled here today, Lord, who took the time out to come to this church on Jefferson Boulevard. Over a hundred years now we've been in the community, Lord, and through your guidance, 
we'll ask for some more, whatever it may be. We ask your blessings upon the leadership of not only this church, but of this nation. As it says in your word, we will be hearing from, from false prophets from, from time to time. But through your learning, Lord, we know how to disregard them and pick up your word. We ask for the power, the grace, and humility to walk these streets, Lord, and, and knowing that we walk with you, we talk with you. And now as I begin to set my seat, let everybody say amen, amen, and amen.
feeling sad and low, when I tire of daily trials that I have to undergo, when those who seem closest seem like people I don't know, one thing can always cheer me, I know that God is near me. One thing can always cheer me when I do not understand how pain and sadness in our lives can get so out of hand. When the best of human efforts doesn't meet the day's demands, one thing can always cheer me. I know that God is near me. Thank you so much for that selection from our praise ensemble. God is great all the time. And all the time, God is great. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning and our message entitled, Trouble, Trauma, and Drama. No more trouble. Our texts will come from two places. John chapter 16, verse 32 and 33, and then we'll move to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11 is the second. The opening scripture text is John chapter 16, verse 32. Reading from the New King James Version. Jesus speaks. These things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 through 11, again from the New King James Version. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, in the appointed season. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, 
because your adversary, the devil, walks around about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me. Amen. People, people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. When you figure out which it is, you know exactly what to do. I know why you are here. People of God, my people, I know why I am here. God loves you and so do I. People come into our lives for a season, a reason, or a lifetime. And then once you figure that out, that you can govern your steps accordingly. To all viewing and participating and present at our worship service this morning, by way of YouTube, Android, and mobile devices, listening via radio station KJLH 102.3 on the FM side, here in Inglewood, California, in Los Angeles, all present in the sanctuary, Pastor Tunstall in his absence on vacation, pastors on staff, Reverend Martin, Minister Tim Harris, Dr. Henderson, Dr. Priscilla Radcliffe, Reverend Bruce Jackson, Dr. Marzette, Reverend Mays, deacons and trustees, good morning. I must pause for a moment to thank God for all those who are now with the Lord. Those who have been very instrumental in yours truly standing before you to be deliver and to speak what God has placed on my heart. I praise in God and I thank God for this opportunity, this preordained moment in time to bring a message to you. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the Lord. Thus says the Spirit of God, I would have you to be an overcomer, for overcomers are those who fight through every circumstance. Overcomers are those who fight through every situation that is established against them. The overcomer is the one who casts down the vain imaginations and the arguments that the enemy brings against them. The overcomer lives in my promises. Choose to be an overcomer and begin today by the renewing of your mind in the truth of my word. Jesus in me is stronger than any wrong desires in me. My faith triumphs over my feelings. Though I may lose some battles, praise the Lord, I win the war. Jesus in you is stronger than any of your wrong and fleshly desires that attempt to overtake you. Your faith in God and my faith in him triumphs over my flesh, my carnal nature. Though I may lose some daily battles, moment by moment, step by step, I will win the war. I believe in a divine and loving presence that binds all life. This belief drives me with a desire to eliminate the social evils. There is the interrelated structure of reality, as the late Dr. Martin Luther King would say, quote, 
all men are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one indirectly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. Do you want to be peaceful and happy and, and safe? Don't all human beings want these things? Don't all feeling beings seek these things? When we look at the trees and the flowers, even the ones that are transplanted from nurseries into the streets and the sidewalks of the city, but when you see the trees and, and the flowers and how they grow towards the light, photosynthesis. Can't we infer that they and all life forms, be they animate or inanimate, desire these things? Since peace and happiness and safety are universally shared goals, how can we, how can I, and how can you live in such a way that allows all life to thrive? Previous generations and wisdom teachers and healers and reformers and social activists have pondered these questions and come up with the idea of the beloved community. The beloved community. The community of the beloved. But you ask, what is the beloved community? Although the idea behind the beloved community is timeless, the phrase was first used by philosopher theologian Josiah Royce, who founded the Fellowship of Reconciliation. It was then popularized by the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. Here are five characteristics of the beloved community. Number one, given our shared desire to be peaceful and happy and safe, the beloved community describes a practical and realistic and achievable society, the kingdom of God. In the beloved community, number two, conflicts still exist, but it is resolved peacefully, nonviolently, and without hostility, ill will, or resentment. Number three, in the beloved community, we appreciate and recognize the inherent worth and value of all people, animals, and ecosystems, the kingdom of God on earth. In the beloved community, we are motivated by kindness, compassion, and love for all. We work cooperatively to peacefully end hunger, prejudice, poverty, homelessness, environmental destruction, factory farming, and violence and injustice of all kinds in the kingdom of God. And number five, in the beloved community, the means we use to create change are just as kind and compassionate as the ends we seek. Our commitment to unconditional and all-inclusive kindness and goodwills allows the beloved community to become what Dr. King called an engine of reconciliation. I believe in the Christ who transforms communities. I believe in the Christ who transforms culture. I believe in Christ who transforms you and me. With that being said, my brothers and sisters, peace is the presence of God, not the absence of trouble, trauma, or drama. It is an understanding that the presence of God, the rule of God, the kingdom of God, the presence of God is with you and I. It is not the absence of trouble, drama, or trauma. You see, I believe in the power of the Word of God, but I also believe in the reality of the kingdom of God, which is the rule of God in the world. Jesus talked about the kingdom when he came preaching. He reminded his listeners and his disciples that the kingdom of God is within you, is within me and that they and we are members of the kingdom as they and we and I surrender to the purpose and the will of God in your lives and in mine. So I believe in kingdom ethics and kingdom values because they are linked to the gospel of Jesus Christ and what I find in the gospel story about who Christ is and what he did for us and me. 
what his life means for us and me especially during this season of the coronavirus, this COVID-19, this, this pandemic, and the quasi-Trumpian authoritarian regime of 2020, this make-believe leader, the emperor who has no clothes, and this who would instruct and this destructor in chief. But I believe in kingdom ethics and the kingdom of God for their link to the gospel. So I know that I've been anointed and appointed by the Holy Spirit according to Acts 1 verse 8 which reads, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth and in Los Angeles and in Compton and in Inglewood and in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in New York City and San Francisco, in Watts, in San Antonio, Texas, all down south in Florida, Mobile, Alabama, Coffeyville, Kansas, Tulsa, Oklahoma, North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, New Jersey, Delaware, all over when the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit moves on you. You speak what he has given you to speak and you say what he has called you to say. Peace, the presence of God. The sovereignty of God, my brothers and sisters, means that God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. It means that he's omniscient. He knows everything. And he's omnipotent. And he has all power. So again, the peace of God, the presence of God, is understanding that he is real, for greater is he who lives in me than he who lives in the world. God is over the circumstances. He is in the circumstances. He's beneath the circumstances because he knows where the circumstances are and where there is. And as Jesus slept in the boat, when those disciples and he were traveling from the Sea of Galilee to the other side, as he was sleeping in the boat, you and I will be able to sleep in a storm when there is no storm in you or in me. African proverb says, if there is no enemy within, then the enemy without can do you no harm. I can sleep because there is no storm in my life. Trouble, drama, trauma. Well, my brothers and sisters, let's get to the point. Number one, realize that drama and trauma are periodically normal to life. You're gonna have baby mama drama. You're gonna have daddy issues. You're gonna have car problems. You're gonna have internet issues. Your Wi-Fi is not gonna work. Your roommate is going to stay up all night playing the television. Your children will be playing video games because they have nothing else to do while you're trying to get some sleep. There will be issues at church, although there is no physical church right now because I remember Solomon said somewhere in Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. There's a time to embrace and there's a time to refrain from embracing. We call that social and physical distancing. But realize there's always going to be some trouble in your life. That which we create by our own disobedience, that which we do not create by the issues and the attitudes of, of others. And then there's just going to be some things that are going to happen just because, just because. I'm reminded by the song by uh, Tasha Page Lockhart, Why Not Me? When I look in the mirror, I see a girl, beautifully broken, perfectly flawed. I don't even know how I made it this far, and I'm asking myself questions like, why did I do it? Why did this happen to me? Then I said, you can get through it. You just have to believe what I do now. Got to make it all count. So why not me, God says, why not? In me, you will have peace, Jesus says. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good courage, for I have overcome the world. Remember Job, Job chapter one, verse one? Job was an upright man. He was not immune from trouble, trauma, and drama. He didn't have those plagues and those issues, and those things happened to him because of anything that he did. His half-witted, half hearted friends came by and tried to explain and rationalize why he went through this. But Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
Naked I came into this world, naked I will go out. I will trust in him, for I know that my Redeemer lives, and I will see him at the latter day. But then come forward. Jesus says the same thing in, in, in a broader scale, predicting about what's going to happen in the end times in which we are living right now. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 8, Jesus answered, Be careful that no one fools you. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will fool many people. You will hear of wars and stories of wars that are coming, but don't be afraid. These things must happen before the end comes. Nations will fight against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, communities against communities. But there will be times when there is no food for people to eat, and there will be earthquakes in different places. We had one last week. Always happening. Ground is always shaking, always moving. These things like the first pains when something new is about to be happening. So when things are about to happen, as Chin Chin Awebe said, things fall apart. Don't always blame yourself. Don't always say Satan. God knows what is happening before it happens. But again, realize that drama and trauma are periodically normal to life. And I said, baby mama drama, issues, social issues, police issues, political issues, there's always going to be something. If you haven't experienced anything right now, keep living. But all of us have. And those who think it is not happening, denial is not only a river in Africa. Denial, anti-mask, anti-vaccine, anti-establishment, anti-government, anti, 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 the spirit of antichrist. So drama, drama, and trouble. But God is in the circumstance. Number two, stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to calm the storm yourself. My peace, Jesus says, I give. Not as the world gives, not as you give yourself, not as someone gives you. My peace I give to you. For greater are you in me than you are by yourself. Stop trying to calm yourself. Give it to Jesus. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind, your will, your intellect, your imagination, and your emotions will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Walk softly and carry a big stick. So, trauma and drama happens to everybody. Black, white, polka dot, paisley, straight, Q, LBGTQ, wherever, keep living and keep breathing. Stop trying to calm the storm. Stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to figure it out. You didn't start it. You didn't create it. Only God can fix it. Number three, keep the main thing the plain thing. Keep the main thing the plain thing. Several weeks ago, when God really be, has been moving on my heart for the past 42 months, but several weeks ago, around July 1st or so, there were some issues that were occurring in my private and my personal life. I kept asking God, just what is going on? I'm still, I'm quiet, I'm not complaining, I'm not fussing, I'm not finger pointing. He said, my son, did I not tell Simon these words? Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Sifting. Oh, okay, sifting. Getting that bad out through the actions and attitudes of others. Sifting to examine thoroughly so as to isolate, which exposes the good, as opposed to shaking, which gets rid of the bad. Sifting. Are you being sifted? since March, February. All of us have been tried. Are we being sifted? Are we being sifted? Keep the main thing, the main thing. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Destruction is distraction. Destruction, distraction. 
Distraction is destruction of your dream in slow motion. Distraction is destruction of your dream in slow motion. Drama is a decoy. Don't fall for the okie doke. Areas of my focus are areas of my reward. Whatever you and I focus for our reward, that is going to be where our flesh and where our feelings sometimes get in the way. But areas that are neglected will be in our areas of your pain. Areas of my focus are areas of my reward. Areas that are neglected will be areas of deep, unresolved pain, be it emotional, psychological, physical. And not everything is worth the emotional pain. Choose your battles wisely. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. Number four, get a better perspective. Do what you need to do. Tony Braxton, Missy Elliott, do it. No more wondering why he ain't calling you back. Lately you don't get along. You're sick and tired of it all. You can't take it no more, so let's go. No need to say you feel some kind of way. Just do what you got to do. Just do what you have to do. Just do what you have to do. Get a better perspective. There's safety in counseling, in the number of counseling. So just do what you have to do. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Every adversity that comes into your life is a bridge to a greater place of victory. Let me say that again. Every area, every adversity in your life that comes to you is a bridge to a greater place of victory. You are what you become. You and I are more than conquerors through him who conquered for us. Put it to the think test. Whatever you're going through, put it through the think test. You say, now, what is the think test? What is the think test? Well, T, is it true? If what you're assessing, what's happening in your life, in your relationships with God, before you speak anything, put it through the think test. T, is it true? H, is it honest? I, is it necessary? And K, is it kind? Put it to the think test. Now, what will fail the think test? These three things will fail the think test. Number one, gossip, negative tweets, and texts will fail the think test all times. Texting in the negative, speaking in the negative, gossip in the negative will fail the think test. Number two, attacks and verbal assaults will fail the think test. And number three, judging others will fail the think test. We find these words in Psalm 119, 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn the statutes. Thy law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Think about why you started. Think about where you started. Reflect, spend some time, go back, think about. It. And remember this, you will always lose when you lose your temper and the devil finds it. When he does, he will say and do everything and anything that he has been trying to wait and wait to do to you. He will use the carnality of one to entice and lure you in. He may shame and name call you through the voice of another. It's not what you say, my brothers and sisters. It's how you say it. Did not James write, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. James 3.8 says, Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. That's James 3. Verse number nine. Number six, look for an opportunity to grow and or become a solution to others in the beloved community. Look for an opportunity to grow or become a solution for others. As the late representative John Lewis would say, get into good trouble. Untie others of like mind. Unite with others. And my brothers and sisters, is the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not cut what you have the ability to untie. Do not cut what you have the, what you have the ability to untie.
When God is getting ready to change your life, my brothers and sisters, he will put us up to, or keep you in frustrating situations which is totally beyond our control. As I draw to a close, dissatisfaction is a precursor for change. Dissatisfaction is a precursor for change. Some may call it inspirational dissatisfaction. You see something, if it's in your power, and the time to fix it, fix it. The size of the problem will predict the size of your reward. The bigger the problem, the bigger the reward. And God is great all the time. Here is God's process. Number one, there is a need for change and growth. This pandemic, seasons, racial injustice. God uses the crises. A crisis creates hunger for, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Hunger creates a search. The search leads us to a higher truth, understanding or revelation, and the re that revelation will bring transformation in your life. A real revolution is, comes from a revelation. A revelation of who Christ is, what the kingdom of God is, will bring about a revolution. I believe in Christ as a transformer. He's the original transformed nonconformist. He transforms culture. He'll transform you. Surrender to him. Real opportunities lies in a place where there are the greatest complaints. Real opportunities lie where there are the greatest complaints. And God never ends on a negative. All is well when it is ended. If it is not well, it is not ended. God never ends on a negative. All is well when it is ended, and if it is not well, it is not ended. Light will emerge out of darkness. Life will come out of death. That's resurrection power. Failure is the womb of success. Joy emerges out of deep sorrow. Patience surfaces out of long suffering. Courage manifests itself out of fear. That's called perseverance. That's what we need perseverance. Certainty arises out of doubt and professionals evolve out of amateurs and order will come from chaos. Recite this as we draw to an end. God is bigger than the problems you encounter. Say it with me. God is bigger than the problems that I encounter. God is bigger than the problems that I encounter today, tonight, tomorrow, next week, Next week, next year. He's bigger than all. Somebody's bigger than you or I. When faced with trouble, trauma, or drama, number one, remain calm. Remain focused. Renew your faith. And remember God's promises and provision. A faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. A faith that cannot be Tested cannot be trusted. And when things become difficult and complex, focus on the basics of what is important to your well-being. Get back to the word and the power of redemption through the cross of Calvary. Establish yourself again in the main things that actually matter in terms of re eternity. Refocus and regain your sense of equilibrium and simplicity. Keep it simple, saints. Paul writes, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And lastly, when I speak of love, I am not speaking of some sentimental and weak response. I am speaking of some deep, agape, God-giving, God-fearing love. I am speaking of that force which all of the great religions have seen as the supreme unifying principle of life. Love is somehow the key that unlocks the door which leads to ultimate reality. The Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist belief about the ultimate reality is beautifully summed up in the first epistle to St. John. Let us love one another for God is love and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. Christ gave us the goals, and Mahatma Gandhi provided the tactics. No more drama. Trouble, trauma, and drama. In the world, you will have tribulation. 
but be of good courage, for I have overcome the world. And when the headache, when the heartache of this present world weighs heavily on us, we have only to look up and look ahead at the joyous beginning of a new story that will never end. The death, burial, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus the Christ. Won't you come? Won't you join him? By email, by e-text, contact in the office. Come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Come unto Jesus. Come while there is time. He will make all things new and create a new you too. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus while you and I have time. No more drama. No more. It stops. You are good. You are good.